Welcome back, book fiends, to Wicked Good Books, a channel dedicated to books and things book adjacent. My name is Nick, and I'm the host of this channel. Today's video is going to be a spoiler-free review of the graphic novel Kill Six Billion Demons by Tom Parkinson Morgan. For those of you not familiar, this used to be a webcomic on his website and was picked up by Image Comics and then uh, made into an actual graphic novel and we'll put in graphic novel form. I'm not sure if it was put in comic form or not. I didn't actually check on that, but I know that the, there are currently three volumes of this graphic novel series available to you. In the spoiler free review, we're going to be talking about the plot. We're going to be talking about the characters, the vibe, uh, the art aesthetic, since this is my first graphic novel review on this channel. Uh, so a little bit different than my book reviews. Um, it's going to be a little shorter in nature because I feel like it's really hard to talk about this story without getting uh, or in graphic novels in general without giving visual spoilers away. I am going to be showing some art in this video, um, but I'm going to make sure that the art that I choose will be referenced as well as not giving too much away for the story. So let's get into it. This is the cover of Kill Six Billion Demons by Tom Parkinson Morgan. Uh, again, this used to be a webcomic. It's now an official graphic novel with three volumes from Image Comics. Uh, it's definitely a strange size compared to other graphic novels that I'm used to, um, but I think it really worked for this one because of how broad the scope is of this world and, and some of the images just they felt like i was looking at uh, i spy and where's waldo but like from hell as for the pitch uh this story is about a barista and college student named allison uh, who is thrust into another dimension full of angels and demons monks and knights in a massive ancient city at the center of every known universe in pursuit of her boyfriend who is kidnapped by mistake that's like the, the soft pitch for it. There's so much more to it than that. Let's talk about the world and what makes this story so unique to me anyway. is It, it takes place in a city called Throne, uh, which is also known as the Red City. It's this massive, almost Minas Tirith from Lord of the Rings-esque uh, city that has it, it had the, the color work and, and the shape of it. reminds me of the Grand Canyon in the U.S. Uh, it sort of just juts out from this vaporous clouds below. And there's this whole undercity below those clouds as well. Um, that you get to see a little sneak peek in throughout the story. But largely the story takes place in Throne on this massive tower-like city with all these almost like stone effigy or stone golem, uh, massive, we'll, we'll say colossal giant stone men and women all around the city, all looking in different directions. And they all have different shapes and sizes and, and different variances of what they look like. I'll show some artwork here to kind of better allude to what I'm talking about. Uh, but essentially... This is a psychedelically visceral and spiritual world stooped in an original mythology that takes inspiration from multiple, dare I say, all religions and cultures of our world, and then some. As for some lore on the Red City, it goes like this. Uh, this is like the general pitch for this world. Throne, domain of kings, the Red City, glory of the divine corpse. First, there was Yusun who split themselves into two halves, black and white. This duality of higher beings took the form of a male and a female. These two fought and eventually loved one another until one day they created 777,000... No, I, guess I can't even do it without screwing it up. <laughs> Tim, you, Tom Parkinson, Morgan. I can't even say that number. Until one day they created 777,777 in all black and white demigods each with a part to play in building Throne, the massive city they all lived and thrived and warred over for eons. When the 777,777 demigods grew bored of infinity, they created the four inheritors, basically the four predominant races of this world, angels, demons, etc. These colossal beings gathered around the red city of Throne and turned away from it, each facing a different direction, and told a story which created a line shooting out into that direction to create the spokes of the great wheel that would later bind and connect the 777,000 different worlds and realms together, all connecting back to Throne, a heaven of sorts. Essentially, Throne becomes the center of all these realities and alternate dimensions. Each one of the 777,777 demigods is essentially uh, the creator and the guardian of their own realm looking in different directions away from throne. After years of silence and solitude, however, heaven is breached by a powerful being who strikes down the 777,777 demigods and giants and gains the power of creation. He uses this power to grant other champions of many races and genders and sends them on their way to conquer the many other realms leading away from throne, each with a key allowing them to access to and from throne 
from their newly inherited realms. So these demiurges conquered throne, empowered the angels, and brought the demons to heal, essentially masking them, which I'm assuming is a, their way of dulling their powers. And, uh, and from there, that's sort of like the creation myth of this world that you kind of get in bouts and bouts of exposition throughout the story. Where Allison comes in, one of those demiurges is on the run, being chased by an unknown foe, and he plants, <laughs> he places the key to this universe, to his, to Earth, into the mind of Allison, into her forehead, to, for safekeeping while he's on the run. This also thrusts Allison into Throne, where she is fish out of water, a human from Earth, never even heard of this place before, and she's sort of us being shell shocked, trying to figure out her way and her place, and uh, trying to find her way back home. As well as learn that her boyfriend was also thrust into Throne, and she has to try and find him and find a safe way home, and also survive the day because everything there seems to want to kill her to gain access to the key that's now in her head. As far as the main characters go, you have Allison, the, the blonde barista on the cover that has the key to her universe plunged in, in her forehead that kind of glows from her forehead throughout the whole story. Uh, and then she, the first person she meets and kind of helps her is named White Chain, who is essentially one of the monk-esque angels. Now the angels in this world, I put a picture up here so you can see them, uh, the angels in this world are sort of this like celestial, Lovecraftian, extra-dimensional beings that essentially possess these built bodies of armor, those mechanical-like bodies of armor created by the Demiurges down in Throne, and they sort of become like the police force for Throne. So this white chain character is sort of like a rogue cop who uh, him and Allison's paths collide, and at first he thinks she's a danger, and then once he realizes that she has no idea what's going on in this world, she's uh, fish out of water, is trying to find her way back home, and he realizes she's not necessarily a threat, he moves to take her to a friend of a friend to see if he can help get her back home. So it just so happens that that friend of a friend of White Chains is Miss Seo, who's a wise-cracking, chain-smoking demon, Blue Devil, essentially, who sort of works the books for this higher demon, and the low, one of the lower tiers of this uh, hellscape. Now, if you're familiar with Dante's Inferno, Purgatorio, or a per a Paradiso, it's very similar to that in terms of like this layered level of um, this massive tower-like city and each layer each level is sort of like a different section for a different race and different cultures and different uh um, forms of power and it's sort of like all these little sub societies are built within this tower so they have to go down down below into the mists to find these demons to see if they can kind of buy allison's way out of throne and that's sort of like the pitch i won't give it too much more because i don't want to give too much away it's really hard to talk about this story now i'm realizing now without giving spoilers away but essentially you have allison who's this barista who is thrust into this extra dimensional hellscape finding out that she's not necessarily special but she has a special key in her forehead and other people are after her because of it and uh the people that help her soon regret helping her because now they become targets just like she is one of the main characters that gets brought up a lot in the story is yusun who's essentially like this world's god or heavenly body it's the creator of throne the creator of all life and uh the lore behind this character alone it, it could be its own story throughout the book um, at the end of each chapter, essentially, you get like this lore dump um, in the form of poetry or prose. And it talks about this character, Yusun, and how they kind of created our, um, this world and created Throne um, from its flesh and from its power. And it's really, really interesting. It's super psychedelic. And I think that fans of uh, Hellboy or Saga or Black Science would really appreciate something like this. It really stands apart from other graphic novels in this genre. There are several themes throughout this book. I'm sure I'm missing a ton of them. There's just so much going on in the background. But there's definitely themes of oppression, themes of uh, abuse of power. The Seven Sins definitely make their appearance in the background, in the foreground, of uh, the main character's journey. My biggest takeaway from this world and this story was that even the power of creation, like, Power is never enough. There's always, there's always this need to want more and to conquer and to see, explore more and to have more. And a lot of these characters just can't, at least a lot of the miserable villain-esque characters, can't just be happy with what they have. And Allison is sort of the opposite of that. As far as the artwork and the text quality, it is some of the most gorgeous color work I've seen since Planet Hulk in terms of just the different vibrant colors that are thrust in there that just are an assault to your senses and your eyes. I would call it vibrant and chaotic. Uh, if you're into... Black Science or Hellboy, it's very reminiscent of Mike Mignola's style, um, but it also has its own thing. With it. it reminds me of other webcomics I've read before, but it really stands apart from those things. It's got a little Adventure Time thrust in there, I think. I think fans of Adventure Time and Hellboy in Black Science would find a perfect balance of those three uh, art styles within Tom Parkinson Morton's um, story here. 
as for how immersive each page is, I legit spent 25 to 30 minutes just staring at page spreads. It looked like Dante's Inferno meets Lovecraft's I Spy. That's the best way I could describe it. They're just truly remarkable and candy for the eye for anybody that likes absurd horror, cosmic fiction, or fantasy or sci-fi or sci-fantasy. I'd say Kill Six Billion Demons is perfect for anybody that enjoys other dimensions, unique takes on the afterlife, heaven, hell, angels and demons, and weird horror, cosmic horror, fantasy and sci-fantasy, sci and mythology. This thing is stooped in mythology from various cultures, and some of it is glaringly obvious where it comes from, and then some of it is just hodgepodge and mixed and matched. It's, it's pretty phenomenal how he was able to just take all this and make it still feel cohesive, like all these things belong in this one crazy master city called Throne. As for what makes this story unique compared to others, uh, honestly, and this is for me personally, I really enjoyed the character creation and the monster creations uh, in this story. They're such unique even just side characters they are in the background that aren't really necessarily important for the main story. Just the creature design and the character design in this story alone is just phenomenal. It reminds me of Guillermo del Toro's work in Hellboy. It also reminds me of the original Star Wars series where you just had these really interesting characters lurking in the background. And you want to know what their story was, but you knew you weren't going to get it. So your brain almost creates your own... Uh, narrative for them as, as to why they are there and that's one of my favorite parts about stories like these where they're just uh, candy for the eyes but also the imagination allows us to kind of create this larger than life lore for this larger than life story and I think that's kind of one of the things that makes this book special um, the character and creature design alone for this story it's truly remarkable. Uh, it just it pulls from so many different sources of inspiration and mythology. One of the biggest draws for me was the inspiration it pulls from Middle Eastern and Hindu mythology. Uh, it is all over this graphic novel. It's all over the story. Um, but I also love a good creation myth. And I feel like even though it's immensely complicated and it's kind of dumped on you with this huge exposition scene, it's being told to Allison as she's moving through the city, explaining what the city is. And it just, it was fascinating. I found myself rereading the page out of sheer enjoyment. And even going back through the graphic novel to kind of make some notes for this video, I was just uh, enamored and enraptured with the story once again. I can't wait to jump into volume two. I might do a spoiler review for that one because I'd love to talk about this with spoilers because there's just so much going on that I think uh, would be fun to talk about with you guys. This is a world that Tom has clearly fleshed out and knows inside and out. And so he's able to weave this narrative through the lore of the city with ease, which then makes the reader able to kind of follow his lead and kind of trust where he's taking you even though it's absurd and psychedelic you're kind of still along for the ride because you, you trust that he's going to sort of make it all make sense by the end which it kind of does i'm really excited for volume two because of where this one ends it definitely leads our characters uh on a <laughs> literal cliffhanger and uh, so i'm really excited to see where that one goes and what happens next for allison um i do feel like this is a, a hero's journey for her where in this volume she kind of comes off as whiny and terrified and not necessarily powerless because she definitely helps get herself out of certain situations and she's not necessarily the damsel in distress although she is the fish out of water but by the end of volume one it's very clear that allison is not going to be pushed around and that she is going to be she's going to empower herself and uh fight to take back what's hers in a very interesting way and i just can't wait for other people to talk about this because i don't see it popping up on booktube at all or on bookstagram and I think more people should be talking about it. I think it's wonderful. It's really funny. It's really dark and gruesome at times. But I feel like uh, this is a graphic novel that shouldn't be missed. And I feel like it might have slipped to the cracks recently with all the new releases that came out last year. Like I said in the beginning of this video, there are three volumes. Uh, one thing I don't like about at least the format is the volume one and two are this larger, this larger print. Which is very different than I'm used to. This looks more like a deluxe edition. But I kind of love it because of how beautiful and how large these locations and these characters are uh, as well as environments but then volume three is your standard small graphic novel size so that was kind of weird I'm not sure why they did that why they decided to change formats halfway through the series I'm sure there's a reason for it but I kind of wish that they had them all this strange size because it, it kind of works for the, the, the absurdness of it all. As for the final verdict for Kill Six Billion Demons by Tom Parkinson Morgan this gets a five out of five stars which those of you know that qualifies as a wicked good book on my scale so Check it out. Really enjoyed this one. I bought all three of them right after finishing the first volume because I was just enamored of the artwork and the storyline. I was looking for a good, uh, fun graphic novel after finishing the Headlopper series, which actually, that's a great example too. Headlopper, is, this reminds me a lot of Headlopper with the female lead. A little more color and detail than Headlopper, 
Um, but definitely in that same vein. So if you're a fan of Hellboy or Headlopper or Black Science, I think Kill Six Billion Demons would be a perfect addition to your shelf. You can also go to his main website, which I'll link down below for the webcomic version of it. I'm not sure if it was released in comic form and issues. All I know is I have the volumes one, two, and three. Um, but I do believe you can still read it on his website. Like, again, I'll link it down below. Just want to say thanks so much for everyone that stopped by to check out this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I just wanted to thank everyone that's been giving feedback lately in comments. I've been really enjoying uh, interacting with y'all on the bottom comments and kind of just going over what you guys are reading and what, and what we share. I would love it if anybody has read Kill Six Billion Demons, even if you're ahead of me, please let me know what you think about it. I would love to talk to somebody who's read this before. Uh, or is reading it currently. It's really wonderful, and I just have so many thoughts and theories I want to talk about, and, and also just favorite characters to gush about. That's going to be for today's video, guys. Thanks so much for stopping by, and uh, stay wicked. There you go. I'll try it. I'll try it. All right, we're recording. Ready, go.